It's August and we're at Santa Pod's Ultimate Streetcar for round five of the 2019 UK Front Wheel Drive Track Series. Ten cars initially entered for this event, but we've already had several breakages either in pre-event dyno testing or during Friday's test day. But we do have the return of 2018 Series Champion Phil Reeves with a Fiesta. Four qualifying sessions over two days, but the weather forecast is terrible. And as we go into Saturday's first session, we have a 50 mile per hour headwind to contend with. First pair out then sees Dougie Gemmel with the TDI North Civic and Phil Reeves in the Horsham Developments backed Fiesta. Phil was running consistent low nines at the end of last season before a breakage put him out. Dougie, remember, is looking to break into the nines. Both the way cleanly, Dougie Civic running very rich by the look of things. And Phil on target right from the off, crossing the line with a 9.6 at 151 miles per hour and a 10.74 for Dougie. Moving on to session two, and it's even more windy. That's Andy Nichols, but in a completely different car this time. And Alan Duffy looking on, but not with his car. Head gasket problems yet again on his Corsa in yesterday's testing. He's waiting for parts to arrive later today, so hopefully we'll get into the field later on. So Andy Nichols' new Scirocco takes to the track, normally four-wheel drive, but with the rear drive shaft disconnected for this event, he's in the auto glim lane. And Dougie Gemmel in the left-hand energy check lane. Pretty much a testing weekend for Andy, so don't expect too much to begin with. Problems with the launch there for Andy. Dougie's going well though. A much better 10.26 at 152 miles per hour. Dan Moulton now with the very quick VW Lupo. Normally races in the VW DRC Pro Bracket class, but trying his hand at heads up racing this weekend. Two litres under the bonnet of this machine, so no shortage of power. Lots of tyre shake from the looks of those black stripes and off the power before the finish line. Crossing the line at just 63 miles per hour, but importantly, he's qualified. Back in the pits, that's Dougie and Alan trying to save an awning from the ever strengthening wind. And on track, it's Josh Holmes putting in a solo run. His first outing of the weekend. He's actually running against a Run What You Brung competitor in the other lane. Huge problems holding the camera steady in this wind, and it must be really hurting all those cars' performances. But 14.28 gets him qualified. Back in the pits and major gearbox problems for Dan Moulton. They got it completely stripped down on the back of the trailer, but unfortunately, it looks like it won't be fixable this weekend. And what about the status of Alan Duthie's Corsa? Um, yesterday we went out and lifted the cylinder head again. Um, I got another gasket to put it back together, um, but one of the pistons looks slightly different to the other, so I don't want to chance it because I've got a bent rod in there, so we'll just leave it and enjoy the weekend. So yeah, had a, a bit of quiet Christmas, um, done some suspension upgrades uh, and sort of had a little bit of a break from it and um, yeah, the, the bug's still biting at me so I had to get back out and give it a go. You've put in one qualifier now, it's a horrendous headwind, getting on for 50 mile an hour gusts at the moment, you still did a 9.6 which is not too bad is it? Yeah, I'm quite happy with it, uh, traction control is starting to cut in uh, and I found like through testing last year 9.6 tends to be the, the upper limit on it. Um, hopefully if the weather sort of calms down it might go a little bit faster but I'm, I'm quite happy for now. Just one run this morning for Brad Morgan in the surf back Renault. Yeah all good so far happy with it. Um, just the one qualifying run this morning there's quite a lot of headwind today and uh, as always we don't expect much reliability with this car so we're just going to try and save it for tomorrow we think. No no that's a mighty strong headwind today really really strong so not more than I can remember. Um, but yeah, so we're going to save it for tomorrow and hopefully less wind. Looks like problems for Andy Nichols with the Scirocco and mapping problems also meant that new boy Simon Crowley couldn't get out on track in the methanol fueled VW Golf, though he did win an award in show and shine. But as the afternoon's run what you brung continues, all seems good for Dougie Gemmel. 
decent qualifying run today considering the conditions so you're happy with the car yeah the car's running well what we've done recently is moved over onto a, a link ecu more advanced ecu so what we've been doing today and yesterday is just setting the strain gauge up you know for flat foot shifting so we don't have to use the clutch and things like that so that's what we've been doing and it's been a lot of trial and error to be honest but it is working now it's important to get the seat time the track time and the data and obviously any little niggles can be ironed out so rather than bring them out for one two events you've got all year to progress the car develop the car because it is a never-ending circle so final qualifying session of the day and it's still just as windy only three cars around this time first pair will be josh holmes in the right lane and dougie gemmel in the left lane Gear selection problems for Duggy right from the launch. As he said, he's trying to get that clutchless shift system working, but a clean run for Josh, crossing the line in 13.43 seconds. And a solo run for Andy in the Scirocco. Sounds like lots of wheel spin there, judging by the engine note. The suspension's really set up for four wheel drive, remember but he's safely in the field, which is good to see. A 13.57 at 114 miles per hour for Andy. On to Sunday morning and the final qualifying session. Six cars currently qualified and no luck with repairs for Alan Duffy, so it looks like he'll be sitting this one out. Not quite as windy as yesterday, but still not ideal. Josh Holmes left lane with the Corsa Racing Corsa and Brad Morgan right lane in the Renault, both new to the class and currently only tagged by the safety team to run 12.5 seconds maximum, primarily due to roll cage spin. But I think both will be looking to upgrade over the winter now that they've been hooked by the series. 12.76 for Josh and 11.9 for Brad. And in slow-mo replay, you can see that the suspension of these cars reacts very differently in the launch. Series points leader Dougie Gemmel on a solo next. And still not getting those shifts to work correctly. Back in the pits, and though Alan Duffy might be out of competition himself, he's found another car with head problems to help out on. Carl Hartley's Astra GTE is another car that could easily move into the class. Uh, egg gasket on number four, I went uh, yesterday racing a GTR. I beat him, but then this is the consequences when uh, you go past 700 brakes. <laughs> it's uh, happy one minute and then upset in the next. But so moving into eliminations and we have six cars qualified though that broken gearbox means Dan Moulton won't make it out. With that 50 mile per hour headwind the times are pretty irrelevant though for the record number one is still Phil Reeves with that 9.6 and Dougie Gemmel in number two spot with a 10.26. First out will be Dougie Gemmel and it seems that in addition to Dan Moulton Andy Nichols is also broken so that means two drivers will get unexpected by runs into the semi-finals. Dougie gets one of those by runs, so no need to push on this one. Though he'll obviously be wanting to check out that gear selector again. And again, slow in shifting from second to third and coasting through to a 12.9. A race next, number one qualifier Phil Reeves against Josh Holmes. Phil should have it in the bag here, but this is racing and it only takes one mistake or problem, so it's not guaranteed. But Phil seems to have it covered right from the start, taking the win with a strong 9.68 at 153. With no sign of Andy Nichols, it's a solo through to the semi-final for Brad Morgan in the 1.4 litre Renault. The wind lights on right from the start, taking it easy 
and recording a time of 15.12. So what's the story with Andy Nichols and his other car? No, we dropped a valve at door slammers warming it up for the eliminations on the Sunday. The engine's rebuilt, it's in the car now. I just haven't finished it off because I've been too busy working on the Scirocco. So uh, hopefully for next, well, for the last Jap show finale, we should bring it out for that is the plan. So as the fans wait for the semis, a couple of exhibition runs to entertain them. Martin Hill in the Fire Force jet car. The jet cars are always fan favourites here at Santa Pod, but something new for this event now, it's the awesome rocket bike of Frenchman Eric Dubois, running on hydrogen peroxide fuel and powered by the same thruster that was used on the Apollo Lunar Lander craft. This is the fastest bike in the world on a standing start quarter mile. 5.64 on two wheels, and in that headwind this time out, amazing stuff. Your first elimination round went according to plan, similar sort of time, so is it settling in okay again after its break? Yeah, it's loving it, bless it. Um, the track is, is not too bad. Um, I'm still noticing traction control is cutting in, so the track grip isn't quite there, uh, but it's consistent, which is nice. Now, I know you haven't got too much call for reactions at the moment because I think you've got to buy into the final, but um, how is the actual reaction time going after that time away? Uh, my reaction times have always been terrible and have only got worse, uh, which is a bit annoying. Um, so I'm going to have to sort of perhaps use this by run as a bit of a sharpener uh, for the final. Semi-final time. The weather's starting to warm up a little, but there's still quite a headwind to contend with. And there's the threat of a few rain showers on the horizon. So it's one race and one solo with Phil Reeves getting the lucky buy into the final. But first it's the race. Dougie Gemmel closest to us in the auto glim lane and Brad Morgan over there in the energy check lane. Dougie should have this one covered but we know he's been having gear selection problems all weekend. Both the way together. Dougie taking it steady at the moment as he missed a shift. Starting to pull back now, but has he left it too late? No, he takes the win with an 11-11 to a losing 11-95. Closer than he would have liked. And for the second semi, Phil Reeves just trickles off the line to take the win. No need to push that engine unnecessarily. Out of competition now, but a test pass for Josh Holmes. Great to see him running with the UK Front Wheel Drive Drag Series. I know you had a few problems yesterday, flat battery and such. You got down the track now, so are you, are you enjoying things? Yeah, yeah. Car, enjoying waiting, cool down, let car cool down. No fault, let, no fault Front Wheel Drive Series in any way. Well, we've entered this, this weekend to do 12s. Uh, next year, It'll be a full 8.5 cage, uh, up the boost. Um, we're hoping for low tens next year. Um, basically, motor's just a 2.3 Saab turbo, uh, stock box. Well, Dougie, you haven't really been pushing it so far in eliminations, but you're going to have to try more this time, aren't you? Yeah, obviously we'll try our hardest. We've been testing our strain gauge and other, you know, other parts on the car today, um, over the weekend. We think we may have done a bit of a selector fork, so what I've had to do is go back to using the clutch while we're shifting, so but we'll obviously try our hardest to beat him, obviously. That strain gauge on the gear stick senses when he shifts gear and should cause the ECU to cut the engine power for just enough time for a smooth shift without using the clutch, but not working correctly at the moment. But then, with the finalists ready in their cars waiting to race, a sudden deluge of rain swept down the track and with no chance of drying the racing surface in time, that was it for the day. The great British weather strikes again. So with one more round to go in the 2019 series, Dougie Gemmel looks to have an unbeatable lead in the points. That final round will be at the Jap Show finale at the end of September here at Santa Pod. We'll see you there. <laughs>